In this lesson, we are going to learn how to graph quadratic functions. You will notice at the top of your notes, you have a lot of notes written on there for you. The first part shows you what a uh, quadratic fu function looks like in standard form. So here, right here, is standard form for a quadratic function. A, B, and C are going to be integers. Um, they can, you can have 0x or a constant of 0, but you can't have a 0x squared. One of the things that's unique to a quadratic function is that you have an x squared. If it's um, an x to the first power, that would be a linear function. So it has to have its x squared. So a can't be 0, which is what it says right here. That's why it's saying that. And then you'll notice that the x's must be in descending order. So it goes x squared, x to the first, and then the constant. One of the things about um, that's unique about quadratic functions that are in standard form is if a is greater than 0, the parabola, which is what these make, if you are going to, hopefully you know that, but when we're going to graph quadratic functions, they make parabolas. And so if a is greater than 0, our parabola is going to go up. That could be like here, that could be here, that could be here. There's all different kinds it could look like. But the parabola is going up in direction. And it has what's called a minimum value. A minimum value is the lowest point on the parabola, which you'll notice I'm marking in black here on my really bad drawn parabolas. The minimum value also happens to be at the vertex, so that's something that would always be true. It means it's the lowest point of where you're touching, so think of when we did domain and range. That'd be like the low point where you start touching where your x or y values, um, in this case y if we're going up and down. And then the other part says if x is less than 0, our parabola goes down and has a maximum value. So there's some parabolas that go down. Having a maximum value would be the very highest point. That's its maximum value. And that's also at the vertex. Um, you can see on your notes all of those things listed. What we're going to do is actually learn how to graph them by hand. So we're going to make a table today, and you're going to also learn some shortcuts for that. And you can choose any way to graph you want. The nice thing about making a table is when you forget how to graph something, a table will always work. So it's a great backup plan. So when you see our first problem, you'll notice it says the axis of symmetry. What's the axis of symmetry? If I go back to my parabolas I sketched here, let me actually sketch a nice looking one that you can see here. Let's say we have this parabola right here. So here's an example of an actual parabola. Oops, go through the dots. Pretend it goes through the dots. In this parabola, the axis of symmetry is actually the line that cuts that parabola in half. It's called the axis of symmetry because it's symmetrical on both sides. So if I was to fold my paper on that line, my both sides of my parabola would be touching. What these are called here, these points on either side, these points are called reflection points. And so they are just across from each other equidistance away. So that's another name. And then, of course, this is my vertex here at 1, 0. My parabola is really poorly drawn. Hopefully you remember doing some of that before. So my axis of symmetry is that line that cuts it in half. So in order to find that, I use the equation x equals negative b over 2 times a. Remember, in the problem, so look at number 1, we have f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 3. Remember this notation, f of x? We sometimes like to think of that as saying y equals. The reason it's f of x is it's in function notation. So it is giving us the y value. It's saying that it is a function of x. So that's the function notation for that. And you'll see that that's telling us it's a function. It would not give us f of x if it wasn't actually a function, meaning it passes the vertical line test. So when I'm going to find my axis of symmetry, the coefficient on the x squared is 1, on the x is 6, negative 6, and on the constant is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in negative b over 2a. So remember, this is where your a is, this is your b, and this is your c. So when I substitute that into the formula, I would have x equals, and it says the opposite of b. So my b right now is negative 6. The opposite of that would be positive 6, divided by 2 times a. My a value is a 1. As I reduce this fraction, I get x to equal 6 halves. So my x value is 3. What that's telling me, if you think of the graph for this right here, is that this line, x equals 3, is the line that cuts my parabola in half. Now, why would, I, why would that help me? Think back to the parabola I just sketched for you. Notice this line that cuts it in half is the line x equals 1. 
the vertex is 1, 0. So what's nice about your axis of symmetry, remember this one for this example is x equals 1, it's always the x-coordinate of your vertex. So in this problem where I just found x to be 3, that's telling me my vertex is 3 and some other number, which is going to be helpful, I hope. In order to find that other number, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, well, what if x was 3? If x was 3, I would substitute these x's for 3. So I'm really finding f of 3. I'm substituting the 3 in for the x. When I find f of 3, that's going to give me my y-coordinate of my vertex. So I would say f of 3 equals 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3. So f of 3 equals 9 minus 18 plus 3. f of 3 equals negative 6. So this is telling me when x is 3, y equals negative 6. So here's my x I substituted, and this is my y value. So now I know that my vertex is 3, negative 6. So when I go to graph this, I can go ahead and plot that. I'm going to erase this axis symmetry so we don't get too confused with stuff on our graph. And I'm going to plot the point 3, negative 6. So I go over 3, down 6. There it is. Now, hopefully you remember when we first graphed parabolas this year that we would sometimes use this table. And that's how a parabola moves. If you don't remember that, you could always put this on your calculator and plot the point. So let's go ahead and show you how we do that. I go to my calculator and I'm going to go into y equals and I'm going to actually enter the problem for number one. So x squared minus 6x plus 3. When I hit graph, if your calculator is a little messed up like mine is, I'm going to hit zoom 6. That'll give me that nice standard 10 by 10 graph. So there's my parabola. Notice that my vertex does look like it's at 3, negative 6. My parabola also is going up. Did I know that it was going up? Well, if I look here, my a value was 1. It's positive, so I should have known my parabola was going up. So now back to my calculator. If I want to find these points to plot, I can actually look at my calculator's table, which you'll see right in the middle of my screen here, but I could put, bring it up on mine. So I go second graph, and there's the table. I'm going to find I'm going to go up a little bit here. Look at my vertex right there. See how that's 3, negative 6? That's my vertex. Notice the numbers above and below it. See how they're both negative 5? Then if I go one more, they're both negative 2. We went through that earlier in the year about how they were reflection points, and they would always have the same y value. So I can actually plot these points, and they're going to make my parabola. So when I go and do that, I would plot the points 2, negative 5, and 4, negative 5, and then 5, negative 2, and 1, negative 2. Those were all off my calculator. So now notice, I can go ahead and connect these dots now, make my parabola. That's good enough points for me to keep going. Remember, it goes all the way through your graph. If you remember from doing this before, our A value was 1. So notice how I moved. I moved up 1, right 1, up 3, right 1. So if you remember that movement, that's something you can use. If you don't remember that, because that's kind of something you'd have to just always recall, it always works to graph it on your calculator and look at the table. I think that's the best thing to do. Otherwise, you also could make an XY table. And if you remember doing this early in the year, we always put the vertex in the middle. And then we pick two points below and two points above. And then we'd plug those in, and hopefully you'd see you get 5 and 2 and 5 and 2. And it was, it's a lot more work to make the table. But it, is a, it always works. Tables are awesome for that, so they work every single time you try them. So ignore the green on here. Here's my parabola. That's my graphing. I'm going to, they want me to list the minimum value. So I'm going to say, I have, do I have a minimum or maximum value for this? So is it a lowest point or a highest point? Well, that's a minimum value, right? That's a lowest point. So I have a minimum. I would say I have a minimum at negative 6, because that's where the minimum is occurring on the y-axis, when x equals 3. Notice my vertex is 3, negative 6. That's what the x value equals. That's where my minimum is occurring, is at 3, negative 6. So I have a minimum at negative 6 when x equals 3. 
and that's how I would like you to write that. You might see it written other ways sometimes, um, but for now we're going to stick with this. So now, the next thing we're going to do is our favorite domain and range, which we've done many times, but now we're going to get pretty good at it. So when I look here, I've drawn, I've drawn in a vertical line. They want me to list my domain for this parabola. So I'd start over here at negative infinity. And where do I start touching? Oh, let's not move my axis. Holy cow. 3, negative 6. There we go. I meant to grab the line. Better. Negative infinity. Am I touching at negative infinity? Over here. It doesn't really look like it, but remember, this parabola is going to keep getting wider and move up. So I am actually touching at negative infinity here. So my interval notation, if you remember interval notation, I'm going to list that one first. I start touching at negative infinity. And then as I bring this arrow across my graph, where do I stop touching x values? Is there anywhere that I'm not touching them? This right there goes on forever, right? So let's keep getting wider. So I would say that my interval notation is negative infinity to positive infinity. If you remember from when we did piecewise functions, that means that my set notation is values of x such that x belongs, oops, let's make that a little clearer, x belongs to all reals. And that's my set notation for my domain. Now my range, I'm going to use a horizontal line. So let me just grab this and flip it quick. So it's horizontal and I start at negative infinity. Am I touching my red parabola down here? No, right? Look at this is the minimum value. Minimum means it's the lowest point. So I start touching y values right here. Notice that's at y equals negative 6. So I would say for my interval notation I start touching at negative 6 and am I going to use a parenthesis or a bracket? Since I'm actually touching at negative 6 that'd be a bracket. And then I keep moving my horizontal line up when do I stop touching y values? Well, see those arrows? That's going on forever, right? So from negative 6, I'm always touching y values. So I would say negative 6 to positive infinity. Remember with the infinity symbol, we always use the parentheses also. So there is my interval notation. When I'm doing this for set notation, I'd say values of y such that. And we look at that boundary point and do we say we're either going to be greater than or equal to y or less than or equal to y. Since this is going up, I'm going to say values of y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 6. You will notice when you do several parabolas, you will notice something about their domain and range every time. There's going to be kind of a pattern because they're very similar in the way you graph them. So you will start to pick up on the domain and range and it will start to seem like a pattern. But make sure you're always concentrating on where it's actually touching those x values. That's your domain. Where is it touching your y values? That's your range. So we have one more that we're going to try together. Number two. So here's my function f of x equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 1. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is find my axis of symmetry, the line that divides my parabola in half. I'm going to use this formula right here for that. So let me label my a, b, and c. a is negative 1, b is 4, and c is negative 1. When I substitute this into my formula, I would have x equals the opposite of b, b is 4, so I'm going to go negative 4, over 2 times a, a is negative 1. Negative 4 divided by negative 2, so x equals 2. Then, so this is telling me my vertex is going to be 2 something. To find my y value, I'm going to substitute this into my original problem. So I would have f of 2, because I'm plugging 2 in for x, equals negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 1. Now the, part of, the hard part about this problem right here is that there is no parentheses. If you look at your original problem, there are no parentheses right here. So this negative is not being squared. You see that? Not being squared. So because there's no parentheses here, when I come down here to this problem, it's really just 2 squared, which would be 4, and then I times it by a negative. So this is actually going to be negative 4 here. A lot of students put a positive 4 because they think it's negative 2 times negative 2. 
but that negative would have to be in parentheses for it to be squared. So negative 4 plus 8 minus 1. So I find f of 2 to be 3, which again is telling me when x is 2, the y value is 3. So I have now found my vertex. If I'm not sure how to move from here, I can plot this on my calculator. So I'm going to go to 2, 3, and there's my vertex. Does my parabola go up or down? Hopefully you're saying down because my a value is negative 1, so I know it goes down. And I'm going to look at my, my a value being a 1. It says up 1, right 1, but if you remember, we really go when it's negative, down 1, right 1, down 3, right 1 down one left one, down three left one. Now again, you may use a table for this or you may graph this on your calculator if you do not know this pattern. And remember, those are always great backups. In this problem, would I have a minimum or a maximum? It's going down, so this is my maximum value. So for my max min, I'm going to say max is three when x equals 2. Remember, this came from my vertex. My vertex is 2, 3. See how these are all kind of relating to each other? So now I have it graphed. I need to list my set and interval notation. So again, I need my dash line. As I take this line over here, am I touching over here at negative infinity? I am, because remember this arrow is going on forever, so I'm touching at negative infinity. Where do I stop touching? I don't. I go all the way to positive infinity. So my interval notation, again, is negative infinity to positive infinity, which means my set notation will be values of x such that x belongs to all reals. To do my range, I'm just going to flip this and use my horizontal line. So I look here, am I touching at negative infinity? Well, I am, right? See these arrows going down? That means I'm going down and touching at negative infinity. So I would start at negative infinity. Where do I stop touching red? Where do I have no y values represented by this graph? There we go, right there. See how it's not there? Right there at three. So I am, my y values are from negative infinity to three. I'm gonna use a bracket because three is included in my answer. So over here for set notation, I'd say values of y such that y is, would it be greater than or equal to 3 or less than or equal to 3? Less than or equal to 3. So you'll notice that what was different about this one is when it went down, we were touching at negative infinity. This is one not in your notes, but I want you to take a look at it quick. What would you do with this? This problem you will notice says x equals y squared plus 5. In order for me to graph this, I would want to get the y by itself. So I would choose to minus 5 from both sides. So I have x minus 5 equals y squared. And then I would square root each side of the equation. Now remember, when I square root an equation, I need to put the plus or minus sign here. And it's okay that I can't square root this. You're actually going to probably be asked about this for domain and range. So I'm going to put this on my calculator because I'm not really sure what this parabola is going to look like. I'm going to punch this exact problem on my calculator. So when I go to my calculator, I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to clear this one out that I was using before. Now notice, I have plus and minus x minus 5. So I would have a positive root x minus 5, which would be right here. And then I have a negative root x minus 5. I have to actually put both of these on my calculator. So when I go in to do this, it's going to take me just a second. I'm going to punch in second square root x minus 5. And then when I come down here, I would punch in a negative. And again, I'm going to go second square root x minus 5. It's important that I put both of these in. Notice I'm going to close this parenthesis. And I have to graph them at the same time so I can see both sides of this problem. When I hit graph, you will notice 
that we have a sideways parabola. The reason I had to punch these in separate is because my calculator takes just a function at a time. It won't graph things that aren't a function by themselves. Look in the middle of my table here. See all these errors? All of those would be the square root of a negative number. Let me just put the table up for you to see. See those error signs? Those will be the error, those will be where I have a negative under the square root. So those will be my imaginary numbers that it's not going to graph. It only graphs the real numbers. So you see here we have the sideways parabola. If I was going to list the range for this, I would say that my range is, or excuse me, let me do domain first. My domain would be starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, starting at 5, and then I touch to positive infinity. My range, notice, I would touch all the way in the bottom and all the way in the top. So my range would be negative infinity to positive infinity. That will be one you would probably see on Excel Math. Otherwise, you shouldn't have any other issues. So if you have any questions, you can let me know tomorrow.